So I am going to talk about a project that I prepared while I interviewed in Hawthorne, California at SpaceX. Um, I presented uh, two things, but this is one of them. Um, and I'm putting the information out there just because uh, I put a lot of work into it, and um, I think I came up with some interesting information that uh, all the other uh, SpaceX nerds of the world will maybe appreciate. Uh, so I set out to answer two problems. One was uh, how many refueling missions would it take to get to Mars? Um, and there's a bunch of different Mars architectures that have been proposed to go in there. Um, and then secondly, if there was propellant production failure on the surface of Mars, could a, um, a mission come home uh, just by bringing enough fuel to come back home? And uh, so I'll show you what I came up with. My accuracy goals, uh, I wanted to have the number of refuel missions calculated exactly. However, um, the first thing here and the third thing here, um, not exactly possible to um, accurately calculate because the information that SpaceX put out about the BFR in the 2017 um, update at the International Space Conference or whatever it's called, um, that wasn't exactly accurate from what I understand. Anyway, here's the approach that I took. Um, I might come back to this a little bit later, but um, you're welcome to read through that if you want. The assumptions that I made, however, are here. So basically, I started with the assumption that the um, if the rocket performed at its optimal uh, performance that's advertised, that it would return back to Earth with uh, zero fuel in the tanks after it had delivered 150 tons into uh, low Earth orbit and um, it would be returning to Earth with 50 tons payload. Um, I calculated, or I uh, assumed a delta V of the landing burn to be uh, 2300 meters per second. This would be um, what I think uh, the delta V of a landing burn would be that lands out to sea. So this is kind of assuming that the um, big Falcon ship lands out at sea. Um, <clears throat> assume that the tanker versions of the BFS would be 70% of the BFS dry mass, I'm not basing that on anything other than just a, a guesstimate. Um, I used the uh, ISP or the specific impulse of 375 seconds, and uh, I, I assume that the parking orbit that um, SpaceX would be using would be about 100 kilometers. And then uh, I changed Mars inclination from 1.8 degrees to zero just for the simplicity and keeping this a two-dimensional problem. Uh, so here are the answers I'll just start off with. If you were to send six ships to Mars, which currently there's supposed to be two sent in 2022 and uh, four ships sent in 2024, uh, two of the 2024 ships are supposed to be crewed. Um, if you were to just send with uh, only 75, 75 tons of payload on board, uh, the cheapest method possible, uh, how many total BFR launches would you need in order to get all six ships there? And so what I calculated is that you would need four tankers per ship uh, in order to get there, and the time of flight would be four and a half months. And I know you might be thinking, well, wait a second, uh, it takes, uh, or you could just go slower and you'd use less tankers. But in actuality, um, even if you did like the slowest home and transfer somewhere between seven and eight months, uh, you would still need to do four tankers. So you might as well um, just go a little bit faster by launching a little bit later in the transfer window. And I'll explain the graphic that's in the bottom right here a little bit later. Um, so then the next thing here is what if you were to send six ships max payload um, Still sending it cheap, which also means sending it slow, which means sending it at the very beginning or even slightly before the uh, the launch window opens up. And I did all my calculations for a 2020 launch window, by the way, and I, I realized that that's going to be slightly different than um, what the calculations would show for 2022 and 2024. Um, but anyway, if you were to do max payload, you'd have to do one extra tanker per ship, and um, just going slow. It would be somewhere between the fastest you could go um, with five tankers would be 5.6 months. 
And then so after that, I figured out, um, okay, what about if you do six ships max payload, but you send the two crewed ships uh, as fast as you can out there. And um, so three months is pretty darn fast. You could uh, theoretically get as fast as two and a half months. However, uh, the number of refuel missions that would be required to get it down to two and a half months would be a little bit absurd. So um, at the end of the launch window is when you would launch in order to uh, make this happen. Uh, but it would take 13 tanking missions, re um, refuel, refuel missions, in order to uh, fuel up the crewed ship before it uh, did its Mars injection burn. Um, and then next, I do six ships with max payload, but you land, all of those would land on Mars with enough fuel left over to uh, put all of that fuel into one ship and then uh, send that ship uh, back to Earth. And so 1,100 tons is what you would need, 1,100 tons of fuel is what you would need um, in order to send about 40 tons or so of payload back to Earth. Um, and that's with a slow time of flight, so 6.8 months or so. Um, and the, all the ships that arrive on Mars would need to land with about 183 tons of fuel on board uh, left over so that the, all six of those ships could have their fuel combined into one ship and add up to 1,100 tons. Um, so the, if you want to be able to bring uh, like uh, one ship back from Mars without creating fuel on the surface of Mars, like a contingency plan in case there is a problem, uh, the total number of launches from Earth would be 66 launches. And then, just for fun, if you were to uh, send the uh, six ships to Mars and return um, one of those ships without creating fuel on Mars, uh, you would need to do 84 total BFR launches, 13 tankers per cargo ship, and uh, they would land with a little over uh, 260 tons each of fuel left over, and then um, 13 tankers per crewed ship, they would land with uh, pretty much no fuel left over, uh, very little anyways, and uh, the crewed ships would obviously go there in, uh, much faster. And, um, <clears throat> here's a little video I made. Describe it as it goes along. So the first thing you'll see is the refueling orbits. So the first four orbits are all in low Earth orbit, and then um, the following six would be in progressively higher, more elliptical orbits. You would do your Mars injection burn at the periapse of that, so the point closest to Earth. Uh, so as far as sorting out uh, what kind of trajectory the Mars injection burn uh, would use, the uh, Logic that my program used basically uh, made a standard or a series of guesses of what kind of um, velocity would be required um, at the um, periapse of the uh, injection burn. And then this is the real meat and potatoes of the whole project. Um, this actually took my computer about. Uh, nine hours to run the whole thing, so this is extremely sped up here. But it just goes through each day, day of the launch window and uh, calculates what the time of flight would be if you launch on that date and you intercept to Mars, and it also, um, in the top left block, uh, goes through the um, like what would be the minimum number of ref refuel missions that you could launch. Um, on the bottom, it's got the maximum refuel missions, which is only limited by the uh, uh, escape velocity of Earth, so you can see um, if you launch with max payload, you could do 21 refuel missions before uh, you're so far uh, out past the moon that you're like one more uh, refuel mission uh, is just gonna put you uh, escaping from Earth entirely and into orbit around the sun. Uh, so that's pretty much it. I should add the caveat that I did not actually get the job. Um, no explanation given. 
So who knows, it might have been because all of this was totally uh, out to lunch and I got everything wrong. But um, anyway, I figured I'm just putting this out there because um, I know there's a lot of people like me that are interested in, in SpaceX and uh, the future colonization of Mars. So uh, thanks for watching. Appreciate it.